So Casio may have just released the best $150 chronograph of 2024. There's three brand new Casio edifice models. They're calling the Motorsport Chronograph. I have all three versions of the watch in today. Now this is a $150 watch, so it isn't perfect. And there is one kind of quirky aspect of the watch you should know about before buying, but Big thanks to Jambiju for lending in the watches. They're an AD for Casio, G-Shock, many other brands. If you're shopping watches, check them out in store downtown Toronto or online at the link in the description below. But let's get to it and check out the watches. All right. So, yeah, when I first saw these in person, I was like, Wow, they looked so good to me. One of my borderline grail watches is the Zenith Revival El Primero, and my mind went straight there. Similar style, but obviously a much more affordable watch here. So I'll give you the model numbers if you want to hunt one down, but the blue reference number of this one is EFB. 730D28V. It's a beautiful shade of blue too. And by the way, I mentioned that one little quirk with these. I'll tell you in a minute, but see if you can spot it ahead of time. Next up is the Black Reverse Panda, which is reference EFB 730D-1AV with a little touch of color on the second hand there, a little pop of orange. Last is the silver, the monochrome version of the watch, EFB 730D-7AV, which is the only one without any color accents on the hands. And also the watch that's not going back to Gem Bijou. I knew I wanted at least one of these for myself, and I was thinking blue at first, but I ended up really liking this one, and uh, I'm going to be buying it. I was half tempted to just get all three, to be honest, but let's get in for a closer look at the watches. The dial on all three are really nice looking, but the blue is definitely the sportier of the three with the red accents on all the hands but the hour and minute. I'll show some close-ups of the different colors as we go through the dial, but up top is the Edifice logo printed in white or black, depending on the version of the watch. But the key text up there is the word sapphire. So we do get a sapphire crystal on the watch, which is nice for the cost. So back to that quirk that you probably noticed by now, but the running seconds is on the main hand stack. I don't think I've ever seen that. And for a second, I thought there was something wrong with the first watch that I was trying when I first got these. It's a little bit hard to get used to at first, but when you fire up the chronograph, the chronograph second is actually at the six o'clock sub dial. The downside with that is it's tougher to get the readout of the chronograph down to the second. Over at the nine is the minutes for the chronograph, up to 60 minutes, and all the subdials have that sunray finish. At the three o'clock is the 24 hour subdial, which isn't the most useful function. When you're setting the time, it's handy to know if you're in AM or PM, but it's a quartz watch, so you're not setting the time all that often. It's definitely more of a form over function situation here, and for me, especially with the chronograph, I'm okay with it. I love chronographs, but I don't use the chronograph function very much. If you do, then maybe this isn't the best option. As far as legibility, though, just forgetting the time, there's no problem there. And even in low light, the loom was surprisingly good. Casio can sometimes miss the mark on loom, but it's pretty decent here and stays readable for quite a long time. The bracelet is about what I expect from a $150 Casio. Pairs up well with the watch, looks wise, and wears comfortably on wrist, but it does have hollow end links. It's on the rattly side too, and the clasp, which is signed, is made with stamped steel. It's lightweight, though, so feels nice when you're wearing it, but I think most people that buy these will likely have them on a strap pretty well straight away. The case has a very vintage vibe with brushwork on the top side and a polished bezel and case sides. The finish looks good with sharp lines where the polish work meets the brushed area. I like that they beveled the top edges of the case, although maybe if it transitioned back to brushwork on the sides, that would have been better. 
I really like the overall case design though. The case has a screw down case back with the edifice logo etched along with some of the specs of the watch and the push pull crown is also signed with the logo. As for size, the watch comes in at a case width of 40 millimeters on the dot. Lug to lug is 47.2 millimeters. Lug opening is 20 millimeters and the thickness is 11 millimeters. We've got again that sapphire crystal and the water resistance is 100 meters. And here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. And what a cool watch. Because of the way the chronograph works, it's maybe not the best $150 chronograph out there for everyone, but for me, it's probably my favorite, or at least right up there when it comes to a design like this for the cost. Solid spec sheet too. I'll put together a short at some point to show it on some different straps. So keep an eye out for that. If you're looking for one, go to gembijou.com. Link will be below. And one other thing, if you're going to the Toronto Timepiece Show, Jem Bijou will be there. That's coming up end of the month. He carries a lot of brands, so I'm not sure which ones he's bringing. But Sam always has a good selection with some of the harder to find pieces. Definitely check him out. Appreciate you taking a few minutes to stop by, and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.